Hello, welcome to the module 2 of this video tutorial, Rudiments of Music. In this module, titled Elements of Music, we are going to talk about melody and harmony. We are going to talk about genre, dynamics and tempo, time signature and rhythm, measures and bars. Then we do the module 2 assignment. Okay. Now, melody definitions. Melody can be defined as a pleasing succession or arrangement of sounds. It can also be defined as a rhythmical, rhythmically organized sequence of single tones that are related to each other in order to make up a phrase or an idea. It's also a structure with respect to the arrangement of a single note in succession. Now, there are important things that you should note in these definitions. Look at this point. It is a succession of notes, single notes. You see the keyword there, single notes. A succession of sounds, a sequence of single notes. Okay? Um, in the other definition there, uh, it is the leading part or air in a composition with accompaniment, then a succession of notes forming a distinctive sequence or tune or a horizontally represented aspect of the structure of a piece of music. Now, to make this simple, melody is just a sequence of single notes that produces a sound without being accompanied by any other instrument or voice part. For example, when you have soprano, only the sopranos singing without being accompanied by any instrument or by any other voice part like alto, tenor, bass, I mean soprano is singing alone, then you say you have a melody. But when you start including other voice parts, for example, auto, tenor, bass, or even the instruments, who say you are now having harmony. You understand? So that is, okay, now that takes us to harmony, the use of simultaneous speeches or chords. You see, now, instead of soprano singing alone as is obtainable in melody down there, as you can see down there, I saw so la mi mi fa re mi re do ti do something like that. But in harmony, instead of soprano singing alone, they are now being accompanied by other parts. For example, that is the soprano line there, and that is alto line, tenor, and bass. So when you have these four parts singing together, you have harmony. But if, when you have only one part, for example, soprano, singing alone, you have melody. Okay. Now, uh, if you look at that, the, those uh, definitions there, the use of simultaneous speeches or chords, we'll talk about chords later. See, so the use of, uh, is the simultaneous progression of chords or notes. A simultaneous combination of tones. Now, there, the keyword there is the word simultaneous and notes. When you have notes running together simultaneously, that is, at the same time, they are progressing simultaneously in such a way that the sound is pleasing to the ear. That is why you say you have harmony. Okay, now chords. It is a group of typically three or more notes sounded together as a basis of harmony. Now, it's a harmonic set of three or more notes that is heard as if sounding simultaneously. Now, the, the, the important thing to note there is this. There are notes that cannot just work together. For example, look at this. When soprano is sounding so these other people are singing me, then tenor, do, and bass, do. Now, these three, these four notes 
form a very cordant sound when you listen to it it's pleasing to the ear but when you start editing it maybe you say okay let me change this to uh, maybe far uh, maybe here you have something like gray or something else and these people are still maintaining this so see that the sound might not be so pleasing to the ear so when you have a combination of notes moving simultaneously in such a way that the sound is pleasing to the ear that is why you say you have chordant sounds you have the right chords it has a meaning of chords okay okay uh, when you have uh, two note chords they are called dyads why three note chords are called triads okay now let's talk about pitch pitch is the varying height or depth of sound it's also the position of a note on the musical scale you know people mistakenly most times people make that mistake of saying that pitch is loudness the volume of sound no pitch has to do with the position of a note on the musical scale for example, look at this. Okay, let's start from Do. As you sing Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do. You see that? Do is lower than Re. Re is higher than Do. Okay, look at this. Mi is lower than Fa. Fa is higher than Mi. Then La is higher than So. And So is lower than La. Something like that and so on and so forth so it increases along that path increase in pitch so as we are singing do re mi fa so la ti do you, we say you are increasing in pitch sometimes you, you hear people say that someone can sing high pitched notes that is there you start talking about vocal range where is the maximum uh, pitch you can get to and you can no longer sing beyond that. That is your vocal range. Some people can sing uh, beyond this, depending on the key that is being played, and even sing uh, seven times this. Uh, you know, depending on the key that is being played, of course. So now you know, you should know your vocal range, judging from where you can stop. Okay, maybe subsequent uh, video tutorials will talk about. A vocal range where we we'll do voice training okay now it's important to note that as you are going down this path you are decreasing in pitch so pitch is not the loudness it is not the volume of sound it is the position of a certain note on the musical scale okay now let's solve those uh, self-check questions remember the answers to these self-check questions are in your training manual please after answering these questions you can cross-check uh, the answers in the training manual it's important to do these self-check questions immediately it's important to do it because it's going to help you in the next topics to come okay now let's talk about genre the genre is a specific type of music film or writing like in music we have different types of genre we have like musical styles like classicals we have reggae we have jazz we have hip-hop blues rock and there are so many of them yes so when you talk about different types of music we are talking about genre okay dynamics and tempo dynamics normally refers to the volume of a sound or notes do you see the difference there sometimes people mistake dynamics for pitch 
When you talk about volume, when you talk about loudness, there you are talking about dynamics. But when you talk about the position of a note on a scale, then you are talking about um, pitch. Okay, now, in music, dynamics refers to the volume of sound or notes. And it detects how you, you know, execute an aspect of a given piece. Either in a stylistic manner, for example, you could be asked to accent certain notes or sing in a form of a staccato, or legato, etc. We'll talk about these things. Is the, is it, also, it can also affect the velocity at which you render a song. By that I mean tempo. It could change the speed of the song. And sometimes it could also slow it down. Like where you have retardando and relatendo and the rest of them. Okay, some examples of uh, the common uh, dynamics you see every day are PPP, which is uh, an acronym or uh, the abbreviation for pianissimo. This indicates that you should go extremely soft while singing. Okay, YPP means very soft. PP is pianissimo. Then P is soft. That means P is, a, is soft, but it's a little bit louder than PP. YPP is also a little bit louder than PPP, meaning PPP is the softest, this one is softer, this one is soft. Okay, now, MP, mezzo piano. It means half as soft as piano. Okay, we have MF, which is mezzo forte. This mezzo forte means half as loud as forte. Why forte indicates loud, means that you should sing loudly. Okay. Also, FF, which means fortissimo, very loud. It is louder than F forte. This indicates, uh, is an indication in a musical piece where you are asked to sing very loudly. Okay. Now, FFF is fortissimo, meaning extremely loud is not actually being used you know frequently in musical pieces but in case if you come across it you should understand what that means okay you have other variations here like sf sforzando which means that you should force the sound you have to sound the notes in an abrupt and fierce manner and ascent it and it applies to single notes. When you see fortissimo, it might apply to uh, a wide range of notes, while SF applies to a single and a specified note or chord. Okay. Crescendo. Crescendo means that you should gradually increase in volume you know people normally make this mistake of uh, singing crescendo as if is ff that is fortissimo no in fortissimo you abruptly sound the note you just jump to the high volume and maintain it until you get to the point where you are asked to do otherwise but in crescendo Starting from the point, the note where it is applied, you keep increasing the volume until you get to an alteration point where you are asked to do something else. Okay, next up is a uh, diminuendo. This is the opposite of crescendo. You are asked to re decrease the volume or reduce the volume uh, gradually. Okay, next up there is FP, which is Forte Piano. 
here you are asked to go loud and immediately soft. You hit a note, a note loudly and immediately you go soft again. That's the meaning of forte. As the name implies, forte piano. You can have some variations where they add niente, meaning, meaning nothing. For example, you can say uh, that you should apply uh, diminuendo, which means that you should reduce your volume and put niente, meaning fade to nothing, fade out to nothing. Okay. All right. Take a look at this chart. This, this should help us have a better understanding of uh, dynamics. Look at this point. You can take a hinge on these two points. You see that as you are moving from MF to F to FF and FFF, you see that the velocity is increasing. By that, I mean the loudness is increasing. See that MF is your speaking voice. F is louder than speaking voice. FF is speaking loudly while FFF you are yelling. Okay, MP your speaking voice, but MP and MF is not exactly the same thing. MF is a little bit louder than MP. Then P you are speaking in a softer uh, manner. PP almost whispering, then PPP whispering. Remember, decrescendo, which is the same thing as diminuendo, means decrease your volume gradually. And it is represented by this sometimes. Represented by this sometimes. You will just see the acronym DIM or DECR or just that. Okay, same thing with crescendo, increase gradually, normally represented by that sign, or C-R-E-S-C. Okay, ascent. When you, when you see this sign, ascent, it means that you should be specific with a certain note. You should stress a note. Stress a note, make it distinctive whenever you see this sign. And it applies to single notes or chords. Unlike this, that is ap applied across a wide range of notes. Okay. There are so many other types there of dynamics like al niente, meaning to nothing, fade to silence, sometimes written as N. We have calando, we have calmando, becoming calmer, molto. Sometimes you see some composers, instead of saying PP or PPP, they might just say molto piano. Instead of saying pianissimo or pianissimo, molto piano. You understand? Meaning very soft. So whenever you see the word molto, it means very. It can also be applied to forte. You can say molto forte. Okay. Now, we also have Dal Niente, Fortissimo Piano, In Relievo, and so on and so forth. We have a very long list of dynamics in your training kit manual. Please try as much as possible as you can to go through the training kit manual to learn as much as you can. Okay. Now we we'll talk about tempo. Tempo is the overall speed of a piece of music. Now tempo can be altered with signs. Like we talked about in dynamics, you could uh, change the tempo of a song using things like uh, relatando, which means gradually reducing in speed. So on and so forth. Accelerando increases the speed of a song. Okay, now here we have some examples. Adagietto means it should be rather slow. Adagio at ease. Adagissimo very very slow. 
Now, I want you to note something about this. You see the word adagio at ease, played slowly. Now they use the word adagissimo, very, very slow. I don't know if you can see the relationship between this and that. You see? Okay, let's take a look at that. See, they use the word here, piano, then pianissimo, and pianissimo. Whenever you come across this word, any word, and they ask simo, this or this simo here means getting softer. You are adding whatever uh, properties that the keyword has, you are increasing that property. Since piano is about getting soft, if you add simo to it, it will mean very soft. You add another simo, you are going extremely soft. You see the application there? For example, here we have adagio, which is play slowly, and now we are talking about adagi simo, which is very slow. So, had it been that we have something like adagi simo, that means it should be slower than adagi simo. Okay, we have other examples there like allegro, allegri simo, uh, adante, adantino, a tempo. The Cerendo, the Clamando, Lagissimo, Lajo, which is lower than Adagio. We have Moderato, means moderate. Lento, which is slow. Prestissimo, which is extremely quick, which is also faster than Presto, the keyword. Valetando, or Ra. This is widely used. In musical pieces and writ, which is retardando, it might not be discernible from raletando. They have almost the same effect. Okay, retardando, that's the abbreviation for retardando, uh, retenuto, and vives. Okay, now, other important musical terminologies which, which you should know are DC, da capo, meaning that you should return to the top. After singing a certain verse or a certain song, and you come across this, it means go back and repeat the song the second time. Okay? After repeating it, if you come across this keyword, fine, it means the end. Or you come across the keyword, coda. Coda means that you should, after repeating this, jump forward to the next section. Okay? Now, other examples, DS, the signal, this is a very important one, means that the performer should repeat the aspect of music, music that the person just concluded the second time. For example, I'm singing a song and I see this sign, signal. While singing the song, anytime I come across this DS. It means I should jump back to wherever I saw this and sing from that point again to this, then I continue. Okay. Now, coda means jump forward to the ending passage. Just like we applied it in DC, we can also apply it in DS. Okay. Anacrosis. Anacrosis, uh, when, you do, when you see some musical pieces, you see that uh, some things are missing. You might see something, uh, something like this, where you have nothing there, you have nothing there, you probably have the soul notes here. Then you said, when you uh, come across such, you say that we have an acrosis. Okay, now let's solve the self check questions shown below. Which of these is an example of music genre? Jazz, mezzoforte, and acrosis? Which of the following can be classified as tempo? Is it valetendo, diminuendo, or da segno?
what determines the overall speed of a musical piece? Is it dynamics? Is it time signature? Is it tempo? MP is louder than MF. True or false? The sign I'll find indicates it does it indicate that you should continue? Does it indicate that you should end the musical piece or coda? Okay, remember after the self check questions, go and cross check your answers at uh, the training manual kit. Then you continue with the next uh, section. Okay, now let's talk about time signature and reading. Time signature defines the meter of music. It is marked off in uniform sections called bars or measures. It establishes the number of beats in each bar or in each measure. So, to make it uh, simple, time signature is the number of beats, the maximum number of beats that we can have in a bar. The indicator of the maximum number of beats we can have in a bar. Remember, another name for bar is measure. So, now we have some examples here like 3 4 time signature, 2 4 time signature, and 4 4 time signature. These are the simple time signatures we see every day in musical pieces. Now, when you see 3 4 time signatures, it means that you can have the numerator there. Remember, we pronounce this as 3 4, 2 4. 4 4. You don't say 3 over 4. You don't say 2 over 4. You don't say 4 over 4. It's 3 4, 2 4, 4 4. Okay, now the number at the top indicates the maximum number of beats you can have in a bar. For example, look at this. We can have 1 here, 1 there, and 1 here, 3. Again, we can have 1 here, 1 here. And one there, three. We we'll close the bar. Then one here, one there, one there. We we'll close the bar. So this is an example of a three-four time signature piece. For example, if you see a musical piece where the time signature is not indicated, you see you can actually uh, denote or find out the time signature from what you can see in the bar. Look at this. There's one common theme here. If you look carefully, you see that in each bar, you have two columns. You have two columns there. You have two columns. So that means in any bar, you count the number of columns you see there, add one to it, that becomes your numerator, three. You see, we have one, two then i add one to whatever number i've counted which is total three once you know the numerator we know that most times we are singing four four will be the denominator most times so we have three four had it been i have only one colon here i could have said okay i have one i add another one to it meaning total two then I could say that the piece is a 2-4 time signature. But the example we have here is a 3-4 time signature sheet. Okay. Now we talk about 6-8 and 12-8. These are compound time signatures. Where uh, in each bar here, in each bar you have 6 bits. And there in each bar you have 12 bits. Now, someone might ask, what does this indicate? For example, here we have 3, 4, 2, 4, 4, 4, and here we are having 6, 8, and 12, 8. Why did the denominator change? Now, the denominator there indicates the value of each bit in a bar. When we say bits, for example, here we say 3, 4, means you can have three beats in a bar, which is one, two, 
3. Now, the denominator tells you the actual value that a bit should be. Is it going to be a brief? Is it going to be uh, a quiver? Something like that. So, this indicates the value of H bits. Okay. Now, for the sake of this tutorial, in subsequent uh, video tutorials, when we start talking about staff notation, we will talk about this. Because by then, we would have gotten conversant with staff notes. Okay. Now, 6 8 time signature and 12 8 time signature. These are compound time signatures. And uh, this is the value of each note in a bar. You should know that the beat is a steady pulse. Or you can say a beat is uh, when you tap your feet, your feet or your toes on the floor while singing. Then you are counting the beats. Okay, now measure some bars. A measure is also known as bar. It is the period of a musical piece that encompasses a complete cycle of time signature. Remember what we said before, that time signature indicates the number of beats that will complete a bar. So when you have a bar, you say that you have had a complete cycle of the time signature. So a bar can be defined as a complete cycle of the indicated time signature. For example, the first example we have up there is 2-4 time signature. Now, see we have one bit there and one bit here. After counting the two bits, what do we do next? We close. We have completed one bar. We have completed one measure. Then we start again. One, two. We close. That's the second bar. Then one, two, we close. That's the third bar. Okay, the same thing is applicable down there. Three, four times signature. One, two, three. We close the bar. One, two, three. We close the bar. One, two, and three. We close the bar. Okay. Same thing is applicable here. One, two, three, and four. We close the bar. One, two, three, four. We close the bar. One, two, three, four. We close the bar. Now one might ask, why what is this thing doing here? What is this? What is this? This is not a colon, right? Okay, now some composers use this to indicate the middle colon in four four and six eight time signatures. Please, whenever you come across this, just treat it the same way you treat a colon. It means uh, a separator between two bits, just like the colons. Okay, remember that when you count the colons 1, 2, 3 and add 1 to it, it will give you the numerator of the time signature. From there, you can say, okay, this is a 4-4 four, four time signature piece. Okay, now, another example, 6, 8, we have 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay? Okay, that leads us to the next section. Let's solve some self-check questions. Remember, please, after solving these questions, cross-check them in your training kit manual and uh, score yourself. If you don't do well, maybe you should repeat this section again. Okay, at this point, I expect that you pause the video so that you can answer the questions before proceeding to the next section. Okay, after you are done with that, please 
do the module 2 assignment. Now, this assignment is meant to be done by you and submitted to your choir master or anyone else that can be able to mark and rate the, uh, your answers appropriate, appropriately. Please make sure you do this assignment before jumping to the next module. At this point, I expect that you pause the video and take your time to solve the assignments before going over to module 3 of this video tutorial. Once more, welcome to this video tutorial. My name is Ezurike Chinedu. Thank you.